Hi everyone, it's Natasha and I thought I would share today for a change of pace rather than the uh, toilet paper mini, a travel mini which is the May Wild Orchid Craft Design Team ch um, Challenge and <laughs> Sarah's making me laugh because this is being recorded on a new stream. No, I'm not cooking nugget. <laughs> Instead I have to put a um, roasted chicken, uh, chicken into the oven to roast and it's not going to be any of our chicks no although nugget is ginormous now uh, <laughs> so you know that we've named all of them it's um, nugget nana omelet yaitza el loco and nelly frittata and I, I promised I have to take photographs of them maybe I'll take them outside tomorrow you might even hear them from the kitchen um, I'll take them outside and one at a time and take photographs tomorrow in the daylight in nice sunny uh, sunny light. So now that we've totally diverted from that, but um, um, I lost my train of thought. It was there. It was just like right there. I could taste it and then it was gone. All right, so I've cut these out with um, craft card stock using a Sizzix extra large die called envelope pocket and you can see the creasing right there so there it is and these are the crease lines um, you have to keep in mind if you use this that uh, the thicker the paper you use the more likely these crease lines are to rip so keeping that in mind I did cut these all out of craft color or craft paper from Hobby Lobby and as you could see uh, many of them did rip but I am going to make compensation I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do so there's a couple of options uh, what I want to do is create a travel mini particularly road trip kind of mini so that I can have a tag that keeps track of all of our mileage and if we're getting getting good mileage uh, for the gas one for all the various pit stops we've made, one at the various hotels, motels that we stayed at. Because I like to pick up little mementos at different places. Um, so I can also tuck them into the pocket. Um, and then whatever else you find along the way. And the other thing that I thought might be cool is because these are a nice size, they can really be oriented in any direction you want, giving you all sorts of options. If you orient it on the side with the tab on the side you could bind it here with either bind it all or cinch and then have these be open flaps add another piece of paper here either decorative or craft and then have this be a pocket so you have this surface space this pocket this surface space this surface space and then the back that's a lot of real estate because these are pretty large let me give you the dimension let me just grab my trusty ruler so I can tell you exactly how big the finished pockets are so from tab to end they're five inches and from side to side they're four and a quarter and each of these flaps are four inches so that's a lot of real estate so I was thinking with this amount of real estate even with all sorts of additions and decorations I still have room to have something cool on the back which I thought would be nice to have a full um, Polaroid already matted so I'll have a black mat on this ready to go so all I have to do is print and pop on a photograph so if it's a pit stop we made or something funny that happened along the way I could just print that off and have that on here and the full Polaroids, this is just plain paper, and I've already written down the dimensions for you guys if you want to see them, or if you want to reproduce them. It's a four and a half by three and a half white piece of paper. And the interior, which is going to be, I'm going to be cutting that out of black in a minute, is 3.125 inches by three. And then the black layer, or the photograph, you don't have to have a black layer, but I thought it might be kind of cool before I actually add the photograph to have a black layer on there denoting the faux um, Polaroid. The uh, border is quarter inch around the top and the sides, 
and the bottom uh, is 0.875 where you can add a little sentiment or do a little journaling there's all sorts of things so you have room you don't even have to worry about the bottom one because if you align the top and the two sides the bottom is automatically whatever's left over so let's cut the centers uh, out of the black I haven't quite decided which way I'm going to orient these pockets yet, so that's why I haven't um, adhered them yet. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move you back just a little and grab my cutter. And then I'm going to show you a little trick. My blade on my paper cutter is, as you could see, oh, maybe it's not focusing. Hold on. Focus. Too much white. See if I'll focus on something specific. Okay. It's really, really out of shape and it's ripping my paper, but I have a trick. I'm going to make these ratty edges look as clean and sharp as this one because I've already done this one. And I'll show you that in a second. But first, I'm going to cut the black layer. And the black is going to be cut at three by three and 3.125. So let me cut the three first. And this is my favorite cover stock. And it's extra thick and textured. See how it's ripping up the edges a little bit. But there's a way to fix that. So I just need six of them because I have six full Polaroids. So three. And I have an extra set off to the side. Okay, so it's three wide by 3.125, and I think that's the first. I'm just going to cut one to make sure that that's what it is. Yep. So that's what it's going to look like, or more appropriately, minus the writing, like this. So it looks just like a Polaroid. And I'll have them on probably the back of the pages. So I need six, so it's three and like this. And I'll include all the dimensions on my blog once I... My goal is to finish this in one sitting, so we'll see how quickly I could do this. Alright, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So just from one piece of paper, that was enough. Um, so I am going to adhere them down. And I am going to keep this one with little dimensions in case if anybody needs to see it. So I was going to show you a trick. And I'm going to have to move you over for, to show the trick. Just make sure there's no animals behind me. Sorry, Mos Mos. Alright, I'm going to move you out to the edge of my desk. Okay, so here's the edge of my desk. And I have this ratty piece of paper that has all sorts of trails on it. I have my trusty 19 cent sanding block. I'm going to put the paper, the ratty side paper, ratty edge paper up on my desk and I'm just going to rub it with the sanding block. And you'll be amazed at how quickly that gets rid of all of that little furry edges. See like there's furry edges right here. So here's a before. So let me use it. And I literally line it up all the way to the edge. And now they're all gone. So I have this one left to do. So I'm just gonna do that to each of the pieces of paper because I don't have another blade for my cutter for my trimmer to resolve, you know, to recut them. So it's just a little trick. 
the sanding block takes care of all that loose stuff. And because I have an old desk, I don't mind doing this against my desk. If you have a nice new desk that you don't want to damage, because this is an old metal, like, withstand just about anything desk, so I would definitely recommend putting it on maybe using a cutting board, you know, have a cutting board just for crafting, which I do have one as well. This really cleans that up nicely. That way I don't have to pull out a pair of scissors and accidentally trim something off because I do want this to be pristinely the correct dimension. Uh, of course, if you want the distressing, then I guess using an old blade works really nicely. <laughs> Unexpected bonus, right? And this goes pretty quickly. Uh, definitely quicker than it would for me to go to the store, get a new blade, and recut all these. And then I'm going to also check the black paper that I cut just to make sure that those are okay. And of course, I'm covered in shavings now, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, so let me just check the black. Black actually turned out pretty even. And I did flip the black paper over because one side has uh, texture. So I'm doing it on the non-texture side because I don't want to scratch down in um, any other texture element. And when I was trimming, the refuse definitely is visible on the other side. So there's a little tip for today. And I think I've already mentioned that um, I get the sanding blocks at my local hardware store for 19 cents for one of these. I think dollar stores also have them if you have a Dollar Tree or do Dollar General, one of those around, whatever your local five and dime. Because if you buy the, the scrapbooking one, it's just an opportunity for a company to charge you money because they have to repackage it and you know, or manufacture it, but this product already exists, readily available and inexpensive at the local hardware store, too. So, okay, so I'm going to move you back. And just blow away some of the little bits and pieces. So now we have this that we can adhere quarter inch border makes a look makes a Polaroid so I'm going to grab my ATG which I think needs to be replaced I'm almost out of tape so if you hear it give out I'll have to switch the tape I'm just going to pull this towards me a little bit so I, I'm within the, I line it up quarter inch. And again, you could do, there's a little bit of fiddle, fiddle space or room for maneuvering that you have until you actually press down. So that's one. Oh, you know what I didn't make sure? One is three. I need to make sure that I'm putting them in the right direction because one is, it's not a three by three square. So 
think that's this way. We'll go this way. This is the long way. Yeah, I think my tape just ended. I'm going to change my Anyone has any questions, this might be a good time to ask while I'm fiddling with the, while I'm putting the tape on. Oh, I have one tape left after this. I always forget which way this goes. You know, it's a drawing right on the back of the... I haven't had any problems with my ATG gun other than the fact that it squeals like a pig. Like a dying pig. Which is not a pleasant sound. I'm just eyeballing things. If you really want to, you could draw in the quarter inch guide on um, the top and the two sides. I don't mind if it's slightly, you know, minusculely off. That won't bother me. I don't think. Of course I see that now. If your tape wiggles off roller uh, on this part, it means that this one is loose. You just have to open it back up. Here, I'll show you. Of course, I'm always cautious about breaking my nail while I'm opening this, but if your tape is wiggling off of here, like when you go to use it and you see that it 
there's not enough tension for it to stay on straight or stay on tightly without holding this down so do not depress that tighten this as much as you can without like if you see there's give see if it's moving that's plenty um, if you see that it's not taunt here you definitely want to tighten this because that's the reason it's popping off is because it's too loose on the return and I get excited each time I change the tape and um, initially it sounds as though it's not going to squeak but then it does. <laughs> it doesn't squeak for a few seconds and then it starts squeaking. And there's really no moving metal parts, so there's nothing for me to like put DW or WD40 on it. It's all plastic. Shouldn't be squeaking. It should be all good to go. Alright, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six faux Polaroids um, all ready to go. So now I just need to decide how am I going to bind this. Am I going to bind this on the side? Then the packets are going to be smaller so I can't use, and I think I, I'm pretty sure I have a die from Sizzix that fits inside. It's either the Crescent, I think it's called Crescent die, I'll have to check but it fits perfectly inside. I can also freehand it because these are straight edges. I could make a tag if I want to or insert. Or I could create uh, a uh, on my printer, on my computer, like this one I want to do for, <clears throat> excuse me, for like mileage. Then I can have a little form that I can cut into, uh, cut down to size that would fit inside the pocket and like our hotel stays or whatever it might be or you know like I know one of these I want to have as a checklist like departure checklist because if you're going on a road trip there's nothing worse than forgetting something really important like well I don't know your dog's food that's medicated something like that you know something that you can't pick up along the way so then if I bind them this way then the backs can have the Polaroids on them if I bind them this way yeah I don't think that will work because the Polaroids won't fit this way and I don't want to trim, I, I suppose I could trim it down just enough so they fit on the this side you know it's just what about a quarter of an inch it'll still appear like a full Polaroid just not not with as much space at the bottom for like journaling or some or some or things like that. But the benefit of having them bound this way is you can add another panel of either the same craft paper or whatever base you're making out of whatever paper you're making the bases out of or a decorative paper. So you would have one, two, three, four surface areas per envelope per pocket and that's six so that's a lot of real estate now I'm thinking that I want to stay vertical but I like the tabs because I'd like to label them like with my Dymo labeler to make it kind of old school but what I could do is before gluing these down add in an extra piece of paper maybe even double fold it and then bind this edge so I would create a separate as though I left this tab out but it was longer and double sided or uh, doubled up and then punch through this punch through this edge so this way the Polaroids uh, oriented in the correct direction so there's plenty of room to have it this way and there's still a pocket and there's still this surface area so I think that's probably going to be plenty. So I think I'm going to go that route. But there are lots of options with this particular um, shape. There's all sorts of things that you could do with this. So let me grab my craft paper. I think I saved 
I know I saved my bits and pieces, which is one of the reasons why I never really throw things out. Because you never know when you'll something will be useful. So when I was cutting these down, I took the eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. Thank you for stopping by. So I cut these down, so I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six of these. And I also have these little leftovers, so I hold held on to them. So I just check the length of this. I think this is four inches. Okay, so that's four inches. And if I double it up widthwise, I think I'm only going to need half an inch. So um, one by four and then fold it in half. One by four, fold it in half. I'll have plenty of space. Hold on, let me see. And my my ooh, cinch is really dusty. I just think I think a dust bunny just escaped from under it. So let me let me use um, a piece of this black ooh, to try it. Sorry, I'm gonna have to move the camera back just a little bit. Okay. Alright, and I haven't used this in forever, as you could see, it's all dusty, it's been sitting on my floor. Alright, and if I'm using, well, how many inches is this? Three. Well, I think it's got lack of use, it's all... Wow, it's not letting me depress it. You pull it out, right? If you don't want the hole, you pull that out. Well, it has been a while since I used this. Okay, so that's not quite centered, but I'll figure that out. I think I need to... Turn the first one off too. That's not right either. <laughs> the other piece of paper. I certainly don't want to. I want to make sure I have this all resolved because I don't want to screw up the ones that are completed. So I think if I take it in quarter inch. Okay, so then six, one, two. I might have just figured it out, but then I'll have to adjust it for the quarter inch in. Uh, I think I might have gone a little too close and on that side. Alright, we'll figure it out. Um, I'll, um, I might have to play with this on my own offline. If not, a little trap doesn't come out. <laughs> want to come out. Alright, I'm going to put this on the floor for now. So I need uh, four by one to add the flap to the side so I can adhere this side and then I'm going to need to tuck that in so it's going to have to be one and a quarter. Good night, thank you for stopping by. One and a quarter by four. Let me do the one and a quarter of a lengthwise, maybe one and a half. It's better that it's tucked in a little more. Let's do. I'm 
cutting these down to two by four. And then I'll have a tab, I'll, full, I'll uh, score it at half inch, and then the rest will be tabbed inside the pocket. I'm going to save all these little remnant pieces, just put them off to the side for now. You never know when you might need a little some, a little bit of it. I'm going to grab my scoring tool. so I don't crumple them in the process so they're standing up right here okay so these are two by four oh, two by four and I'm gonna score it half an inch and an inch well, maybe three quarters three quarters and then one and a half, and then I have a tab. Okay, so three quarters, one and a half, good night Sarah, thank you for stopping by. It's a little long, like that. So the binding will be right here. Do you need to trim that down? How is that not four inches? Maybe this isn't four inches. these and then fold them down. So one, uh, three quarter It's an optical illusion, but sometimes it looks like the lines aren't straight when you're scoring.
cardstock is really thick. Which will make it hopefully nice and sturdy for the binding. six now in my pocket. So I'm going to adhere this side and adhere this down. Why are they just a hair too long? Just make sure that that's the case with all of them. If they are, just I'll trim them down just a tiny bit. It may be because of the where it's fall falling in the crease. So there's the quarter inch. And you see there's a tiny little bit that's extra. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do first is adhere these down. They're closed. Hello. making side tabs for the pockets where the binding is going to go. tabs for the side of the pockets and they're going to go in here and then adhere it in here but I think before I adhere everything together I think I like the idea of um, putting in some decorative paper over here I think I just need to pull out some from the two paper packs, which I think will work nicely together for this travel mini. And I'm definitely going to have to trim off the edge. And to make it simpler, I think I'm just going to draw the line. Because otherwise, I'll undercut it and then I'll have to start over and this will be easier. So I'm dry fitting each one of these little side tabs and drawing directly on the part that I'm going to cut. I want to make sure it fits all the way to the bottom. And it fits pretty snugly which is good. So it'll feel like it was a part of it the whole time. So I've taken a Sizzix die cut and just altered it with this little addition to make the side binding. So that way you'll have the entire content of the pocket 
um, to put in a tag or receipt or whatever you might encounter on your road trip. Okay, so I have those marked. Grab a long pair of scissors. And I'm going to trim one cut. I hear the chickens misbehaving. They're clucking at each other. Goofy things that they are. Okay. I'll just make sure I got all of them. So if I adhere these down first, then I could put the piece of paper over that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That's the order I'm going to go in. I'm going to make it easier on myself. So I'm going to add ATG to the back. And since I scored it, I know where the edge is going to be. Um, I don't know if you could see that score line right there. Maybe I should line this part up first and then close it. Yeah, that's easier. <laughs> okay, so I'm lining up the front first. I want to make sure it even with the seam and I'm just going to press down so that's what adheres it to the back side of the pocket. I don't want any adhesive on the outside of this because that's going to be the interior and whatever you put on the inside will stick to that little bit of glue that's on there. So I line that up. Some of these side creases definitely cracked and broke, unfortunately. Oh, I see there's, there's a little trick. If you have some uh, adhesive, don't try to pull it, rub it with your finger. The oils in your hand will remove the adhesive, so that's good. That's all set. And then last but not least, You just fell. Sorry. 
loud noises. Okay, last one. Line up the front seam. Back. Okay, now I have all of these with the tabs on the side. That's where I'm going to punch this. And I will definitely test out the cinch before I actually do the live punch on these because I want to make sure I don't that they're centered and all that. So now I can pick out some decorative papers to put on the inside of each of the tabs. And what I think I might do is I might actually use the die cut, uh, the actual die, and just place the paper over the edges. And I need six of those. Let's look at some of the papers that we have to choose from. So I have the Making Memories collection and okay, so we have this one which is the airplane voyager collection that's a little too bright for me Definitely use this one. Like that one. Use this one. These I think I'm going to use to cut out the individual license plates. I don't want to use the whole... Oh, dogs are about to bark. Alright, let's look at the other one. The other stack, which is Great Escape for Making Memories. And they kind of go well together. And these are I'm not sure if this pink goes with anything, but I think I will use this side. So I'll use one of those. Definitely use one of these because the blues from the other one go nicely. Mm. Six yet. Do the top of the floor for that one. Or actually, you know, I probably could have used mm, no, because some of these aren't wide enough. Because I was going to say I could probably have used this page for all six. I don't think they're going to be wide enough to cover. Let's take a look. So this page has each of the patterns on it. Huh. Actually. I could do two of each. I could totally do two of each. Then I don't have to cut into the whole 12 by 12s and just use this one. So I could do two of the flowers, two of the compasses, and two of these flowers. So why don't we do that? <laughs> but I will use these for cover for pieces of paper. Let me just trim these down into the strips and then I'll put them in the into the uh, die to get the edges and just a little in. So I'm going to put the um, compasses. What's the plural of compass? Compi? That sounds like chicken, doesn't it? 
Kung Pao. Well, speaking of chicken, I think I'm going to have to put the chicken in about 15 minutes. Not our chicks. Chicken for dinner. <laughs> so no one misunderstands. Okay, I think that works out nicely. Alright, so I'm going to do those. And since I'm not really going to use the whole thing, I think I can use my cuddle bug for this part because I'm really going to just cut this piece and I could literally just cut these in half and do two at a time. So, eyeballing. Because it's just cardstock, it should be no problem to do two at a time. my cuddle bug and some plates. Set this off to the side next to the Polaroids. So I have the bases. Oops, sorry. Nearly done. Let me grab my cuddle bug. Just to go lie down in the kitchen or in the living room, honey. Just to go lie down. standing there. Okay, and I know my plates are schmatzy, but it's okay, they still work. So I'm taking two of them and I'm putting them face down right over the edge, as close to the top as I can. I want to make sure I get as much depth as I need. The problem with these longer dies and using little pieces. Maybe I'm gonna have to flip it over so I can see better what I'm running through. Yeah, I had to reverse it. So I make sure that I get as much as possible. And I'm just holding it down with my thumb as I'm running it through. You'll see I have the exact dimension I need <clears throat> for two tabs. I'm going to do the same thing for the other four. I know it's dinner time and if you guys have to go, I completely understand. I will continue recording this until I have to stop to go make dinner. And I might be back after dinner tonight, depending on how much I get accomplished. The actual pockets can be adhered. Okay, so I'm just lining these two up and putting them over the edge. I don't know why, but today feels like Friday, but it's not. I know tomorrow's Friday. Okay. I think that's it for now. For just a one couch. Because I have each one of the top tabs cut out and I'll fit them like this. And then I can adhere the 
sides to create the actual pocket. I know it's all squeaky. I told you that there's a, when I went to, when I cut these out of craft paper, craft paper is pretty thick, the crease lines on the die cut right through. It's kind of a bummer. I might have to apply one eighth inch red line tape in there. Because these are, this one happens to be okay, but this one is just really, really bad. Either that or I'll just use maybe I'll just use my glue pen. A little quickie glue from Sakura and run it. I'm gonna just run it right across the edge. Hopefully that'll resolve that. Nope. The glue not coming out. Okay, here we go. It's kind of a bummer. not going down. Well, maybe when I go to cover this I'll overlap it just a tiny little bit. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Well, let, let me just double check the others just to make sure. See like this one is cracked so I'm definitely going to put an eighth inch I'm debating, I'm thinking of something. I don't want to bulk it up anymore because the creases are here identically matched. Let me see if the eighth inch tape will work. Thin enough that I shouldn't compromise too much the size inside the mini inside the pocket. in a sec. Let me just grab the next one of these.
so sorry about the squeakiness. I see there's a little bit of glue. I'm just gonna take that off. Let's see if this still fits. Ugh, now this side is ripped too. Yeah, I guess that fits. This could be a receipt pocket. <laughs> That's okay, we'll make it work, right? I believe these are okay. Not all of them are ripped up. Which I think is even harder because then you don't really know. I mean, I know it's strong paper, but I wanted the bases to be out of a stronger paper as I could use, and craft is definitely pretty strong. I totally misaligned that all that glue. There's a lot of glue left on this one. I have to stay further away from the edge. I think I'm gonna once I finish this last one, there's one more after this one. I'm going to take a break and go put dinner on and feed all the animals. Give the chickens fresh water. Oh, there's two more. Um, and then I'll try to be back later. I'm not sure how late my husband is working tonight. But at least dinner will be ready. So I might be back later. Last one. Oh, the squeaking is awful. I might have to have my dad take a look at that and see if he can figure out what, if anything, can be oiled to resolve that. Because that's quite irritating. I'm so sorry. Okay, last. So as much as I didn't want to, it looks like this is going to be a two-parter, whether it's continued tonight or tomorrow. We have the bases made. The, the binding has been resolved to be on the side. I'm going to use the cinch, so I'll pick out a coordinating uh, uh, metal. We have the faux Polaroids. All created and ready to go for the backs. They'll be right here. I'm not sure whether I'm going to stamp something in the background first and then put them on. 
or if I'm going to put them on and leave them be a pocket on the side so just adhere these three edges I haven't quite decided that but we definitely have these and now I'll find it looks like the blue is a coordinating paper color in all of these and maybe I could use this one and here's another plain blue uh, paper to cover that's if I want to cover these. I might want to just leave them craft. I kind of like this idea. So that's where we are right now. I'm going to take a break. Um, if I'm able to log in later, I will definitely do so. If not, um, then I will do it tomorrow. And if you guys want to play along, I'll start listing the information on my blog for the um, items used for both of these so far, as well as the dimensions for this faux Polaroid. So, thank you so much for stopping by. So, there'll be a part two.